So next key concept is the gut-brain axis, and this is a major, major discovery that happened recently. And it's simply this, that your intestines and brain talk to each other via the endocrine, endocrine system. So hormones are released into the bloodstream and the nervous system, which nerve sig um, signals triggered in the gut are transmitted to the brain and vice versa. So they are talking. Now, researchers only discovered it recently, but it is the hottest topic in medicine right now because changes in the gut directly impact what happens in the brain and other systems in the body. So in autism, our children's gut issues cause brain issues. Isn't that exciting? I mean, not that it causes issues, but it's exciting because it directs us on what we can do to help our children feel better. Powerful stuff. Now, don't, don't lose your mind. Just uh, This image just goes into a little bit more detail of how the gut microbiome affects all the systems in the body. Like I said, just don't get overwhelmed here on the slide. The main objective here for you is to internalize what's happening in the gut affects everything in the body. So if you take a look at it, that, that middle line, that's the stomach lining, and everything below it, that's the microbiome, okay? And then everything above it, those are all the systems in the body that then communicate with the brain. So you have the endocrine system, the immune system, neurochemical, neural, and metabolic. So everything is coming from the gut is coming and talking to the brain. And as we discussed in autism, gut dysfunction is typical. Very typical. So, so let's move on to the two biggest issues with our children's guts, which is one is that imbalance of good and bad bacteria and everybody's favorite <laughs> area of dysfunction, leaky gut. Now we'll get into what causes both of these a little bit later, but just know that the majority of our kids have leaky gut. And I'll go as far as to say as the majority of the people in our country that eat our Western diet have leaky gut. Now, a healthy gut works like a cheesecloth. And I, you know, we have it pictured here, but it allows nutrients through, but it keeps the larger food particles and pathogenic bacteria, yeast, and parasites out of the bloodstream. So it's a protection that allows good stuff out, but blocks the bad stuff. So here's a great diagram showing the difference between a healthy gut and a leaky gut. In a leaky gut, the tight junctions of cells that line your small intestines, and that's where most of your digestion takes place, loosen, and it allows undigested food particles and pathogens to get into the bloodstream. And what that does is it activates the immune system and it causes inflammation and food sensitivities. And I realize this is getting pretty deep into the science, but trust me, we're gonna get very, very practical uh, very soon. But in order to understand, you need to understand why things happen so that we can make better decisions. So what happens is your body sees food particles that get through the gut lining as invaders. So it attacks them the same way that it does a virus or a bacterial infection. Can you see how that could be a problem? You know what that does? It leads to inflammation. It leads to compromised immunity. Your body is spending all its time and it's fighting threats from just the food that we eat and doesn't have the capacity to fight off the real threats and help their body heal, which also leads to not getting enough nutrients from food, which is very common in autism as well, nutrient deficiencies. So let's take a look at a quick example.